Hey guys and welcome back to another surf cam tutorial and today we are going to continue with uh, masking okay now in the previous tutorial I uh, went over the the masking dialog box and talked about it with you and, and uh, just explained you know what it's used for and the different things you can do with it and so now I'm going to follow that up with uh, with some examples and, and showing you how to use it okay so this is the uh, the same part file that, that I used in the previous tutorial this is our um, this is something that this is a part that I drew up real quick in SolidWorks just to, just for the purpose of of this tutorial um, you know sometimes you're gonna get things like this that it has a whole bunch of different size holes and and that's perfect for for what masking is capable of okay so you can find this part file uh, as always in the in the subsection of uh, videos that are grouped that you're that you're watching right now all right so if you want to go ahead and open that up now uh, I've got a I've, I've set up another layer on here that I'm gonna use to go over masking with you okay so this layer is our part model so what our, what our part looks like and this layer is what we're gonna use to talk about masking so it's the same thing it's just uh, in 2d form and we've got the holes all the holes and the profile okay and these these two shapes right here so looking at this, uh, we see that not all of our holes are on the same Z plane. That's just something to note, and no, that's that's not going to be a problem. Just thought I would uh, point that out. These holes are are the ones that are uh, farther down in the part. If we turn, go back and turn on the model layer, and you can see that these the ones that are on different Z plane are the ones that are in the cutouts. Okay, so I've went through here and uh, kind of grouped them by size, changed the color according to their size, and that's that's one way you can you can do it. That's just the way I I chose to explain this. So let's go ahead and um, and look at this here. Okay, right now when we first open open up SurfCam the mask is going to be turned off and it's going to be set on mask one alright so if we click that it's going to turn it on on off now to edit it you just go to the drop down arrow click on edit so there's five different ones we can set up here okay now you can have a uh, create custom masks and save them um, but that that's a little bit that's going to be a little bit farther down the road this is just a what I'm going to do today is just a basic um, kind of introduction and an overview of how to use this okay now let's say that we wanted to the first thing we wanted to do is go through here and get uh, these holes in the center here okay the ones that are yellow now, if we're going to, let's say that we want to center drill them. So, obviously, the one way to do that is, now, today I'm not going to go over any tool paths. Um, that's going to be later on. So, I'm going to be using, I'm going to create tool paths just for the purposes of showing you how to use masking. But I'm not going to actually be going into tool paths while I'm doing it. Okay, I'm just going to use that as an example. So if we wanted to center drill these yellow holes, um, the one way to do it would be to select the whole process, and go through here and select them one by one. Okay, so that didn't take long, just a couple of seconds, and 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 that's fine if if you only have you know just a few holes, but let's say that we wanted to center drill all of these holes all at the same time okay so we, we wouldn't want to have to go through here and select uh, each one of these so let's go ahead and, and set up a mask 
to do that. Okay, when you open your mass dialog box, this is what you see. The first thing we're going to want to do is click on deselect all. Now, as you can see, some of the colors um, look a lot alike. Some of the greens are very similar, the two yellows are real close, and two blues, uh, and so on and so forth. So, the, the best way to do that is to come down here to this arrow. You click your arrow, then go over to the color, and it picks it for you. It's a much faster way than, than um, just trying to guess and, and hope you get it right. Alright, so let's see, that should be just about all of them. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, I believe that's all of them. So we've got our color selected. Now we don't really have to do elements just yet. Uh, I'll, I'll go over an example of using elements here in just a minute. Okay, so just for our purposes of, of uh, center drilling all these holes, that that right there will work. So now what we want to do is and click OK. Now that just sets the mask up. Okay, you notice that it's still turned off up here. To turn it on, we have to actually go up here and click the button. All right, now it's turned on. So now we go back to our whole process. Now instead of going through here and selecting the holes one by one, all we have to do is um, type V for visible and it selects all of our holes. Now the reason that I didn't uh, choose white as a color right now is because these uh, arcs right here are white also and obviously we don't need to center drill in the center of an arc. Okay, so you by setting this mask up, uh, just by pressing one letter on the keyboard, by pressing V for visible, it selects every one of these which would be pretty aggravating if you had to go through here one by one uh, you know and, and do this now it didn't get the white holes but that, that's okay I mean it doesn't take long to go back and select just four holes or we could just change these arcs to a different color and then go back and add white to the mask okay so but that that's it so now I'm gonna say done uh, I'm not going to change any of this information since this is just for an example. Click OK. And we have chained uh, all of our holes to center drill in literally a matter of seconds. So that's that's how powerful uh, masking is. Now, it, it's great using for, for tool pass like I just did. It's also good if you want to copy geometry. Let's say that I want to copy uh, my two green bolt hole patterns. Okay, so if I go up here to edit, I'm going to leave my mask number one set up. Let's go over here and click on the mask number two tab. Okay, deselect all. Then we click on our arrow and click that color green. Then click OK. Alright, so now our uh, mass 2 is turned on so if I want to copy this geometry I just go edit and transform copy a distance again uh, my mask is on so all I have to do is hit V for visible it selects all my holes for me let's say I want to copy it uh, 15 inches over in X alright I want to copy it to the current layer and there it is. Well, I guess I should have went a little bit more than 15 inches. Okay. So let's do that. Let's just delete those. Come back in here and do this again. Okay. My mask is still on. So edit transform. Copy a distance. Visible. See that's that's how fast it is. That's how powerful masking is. Just, just type in a few letters on the keyboard and and it's done. Alright, this time let's go 25 inches over to the current layer. And there we go. So, masking is a, is a very powerful feature that's going to save you uh, a lot of time. 
when you when you go to copy geometry or or um, chaining tool pass or whatever the case may be okay now let's say that uh, we wanted to do these holes in a certain order okay let's say we wanted to do all of them except for this size and bigger so that's a 826 and 7 tenths diameter hole and then we've got these holes that are uh, almost 3 inches alright so I'm going to show you how to set up a mask by a uh, hole diameter okay we'll come over here to mask number 3 alright as always we go deselect all and these are all the different elements that you can um, set the mask up by okay but if you come over here down to this button over here that says more okay then it gives you some more options here so if we click deselect all I'm gonna choose circle you know when you can either mask circles by diameter or by radius okay and there's a minimum and a maximum so I'm going to mask them by uh, diameter so now I need to choose my minimum diameter if I click my arrow I come over here to the smallest hole it puts that in for me okay so if you don't set a maximum it's going to by default it's going to make it the same as the minimum and therefore only chaining that uh, size hole that you just selected but you can go in here and tell it a maximum also we'll say no bigger than the green ones okay so now that's set up so we have a minimum of 106 thousandths with a maximum of three quarter now I don't really have to set up colors for this because all it's gonna see are holes that are in between this diameter okay so I can just come over here and say select all so that it looks at all the colors now anytime you're you're using any of these uh, you always have to have at least one line type okay now sometimes you can tell just by looking at on your screen you can tell what kind of line it is uh, if you if you know that then you can just click it or you can do the same thing with this arrow you click the arrow then you can come over and click on on uh, the geometry and it will put the check mark in the appropriate box alright so now my mask 3 is set up so if I say OK then it's turned on so now if I go edit transform copy a distance when I hit V for visible it selects all my holes with a minimum of 106 thou diameter and a maximum of three quarter diameter, so it left it left these uh, holes out and these holes out. Okay, I want to copy that 25 inches over to the current layer. And there's all my hole patterns. So that's why it's it's really important, um, you know, that you learn how to use this because it'll save you a lot, a great deal of, of frustration and and time. All right, now let's look at if we wanted to um, machine a, a contour. Let's say that we wanted to drop in this pocket and just cut this arc instead of the entire profile of the pocket. Okay we'll set this up as mask 4 now I know that that color is white so I'm just gonna click white and I'm gonna deselect all over here and I'm gonna say only arcs only white arcs click OK now if I go edit transform copy a distance V for visible then it selects all the white arcs. Now these are our circles, but they're technically arcs also. So if I wanted it to just uh, select these, then I could give it a minimum and a maximum to make it do that. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, I want to turn my circles off, and I'm going to click on the big circle. So now it knows that it's supposed to only look for arcs 
with a radius, since this is on radius, with a radius of 1 inch 476 thousandths and 3 tenths. Alright, so I'll click OK. Now, edit transform, copy distance, V for visible. And I'm going to say 25 inches over again. And there is our, there are our arcs. So you can mask um, anything, really. It's all, it all depends on how you want to set it up. So if I wanted to uh, just cut these arcs, I'm going to create a contour toolpath. My mask is on, so all I have to do now is chain them. And since the mask is on, that's, that's all it's going to see. So it's going to start and stop right where it needs to. Okay, then I'm going to say D for done. I'm not going to change any of this information. Um, just click OK. Accept. And there's our toolpath. So our, our end mill is going to plunge in here. And come around. Plunge and come around. So ma masking is uh, is very useful in that in that respect. So practice that. Uh, kind of get get yourself acquainted with it because it, you definitely will be will use it in the future, especially when you have something like this. It just it saves so much time and and makes your job. A whole lot easier when it comes to creating toolpaths or copying or editing uh, geometry. All right, so that that's pretty much uh, it for masking. In our in my next tutorial, I'm going to be uh, doing just a quick uh, recap. We've come to the end of the the first uh, section, so I'm going to do a quick recap on all the different things that we've covered in this section and after that we're going to be moving on to uh, creating 2D geometry okay so we're going to finally be getting to drawing so uh, stay tuned and I will talk to you soon